So 2017 provides uh, another chance here in September for the Big 12 to make amends and, and, and carry on that momentum from the postseason last year. Everyone's going to focus on Oklahoma's date at Ohio State. We've got Oklahoma State with a rematch against Pitt in which they defeated a, 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 an inconsistent Pitt team, but we saw what the Panthers could do on occasion against Penn State and Clemson, and the Cowboys won that game. You've got uh, Baylor going to Duke, TCU with a return matchup against uh, Arkansas. That was a really good game that went to overtime last year. Interesting matchup talking Texas-USC, a lot of nostalgia, big brand there. Uh, few of us are going to think that Texas is going to win that game, but if they go out to the Coliseum and they look good and they play competitively against the Trojans, that's going to fare well for the Big 12. West Virginia, Virginia Tech, even matchup you would think there. The traditional Iowa-Iowa State game, the Cyclones typically outclassed, but play that series closer than many people would think off the top of their heads. Texas Tech, I, I credit uh, the Red Raiders here with that Houston game and Arizona State, Chris, and then also you got Kansas State uh, with a matchup against uh, Vandy. So what really strikes you as uh, being key games for the Big 12? Well, the, the the biggest game for the Big 12 is West Virginia, Virginia Tech, uh, because the other key games aren't great matchups for the Big 12, let's be honest. Oklahoma at Ohio State, that's going to be a very, very tough out for the Sooners. Um, I don't think anybody is going to, nobody's going to favor Oklahoma heading into that game. Um, same with Texas and USC. Tom Herman has brought a lot of excitement and, and everything to Austin, but let's be let's be honest. They don't have the quarterback he wants. He's you know hasn't named it yet. Um, should in the next week he said it hasn't named his starting quarterback. Um, they don't have the tight ends that his system kind of relies on. Um, I think they're going to have some growing pains uh, as they transition systems. They have talent and they definitely have talent coming in. Have you seen his recruiting class? It's a top five class. It's, you know, he, Texas is going to, to be very good under Herman. You, you have to believe that at this point. I don't think that that's going to happen <laughs> right away. Um, so that's going to be a tough, a tough game for the big 12 Texas tech, you know, playing Houston, playing Arizona state. Unfortunately, with the loss of Patrick Mahomes, I, I think Patrick Mahomes covered a lot of weaknesses in that team last year with his ability and his play um, to, to extend plays. And uh, behind that line, that line is is bad. Um, so those matchups without Patrick Mahomes, I don't like at all. We saw Houston, they get incredible. They, they want to beat the Big 12 so bad. We saw what they did against Oklahoma. They, you know, the fact that the Big 12 didn't bring them into the conference, they kind of carry that chip on their shoulder. Um, and now that their coach is a Big 12 coach, it's I, I think that it, it's not a great matchup for for Texas Tech. Um, I, I think Houston definitely wants it more um than the Red Raiders are going to in that game. And then Arizona State's just gonna be a tough matchup overall because they're I, I don't know who how you know who they got coming back this year. Um, but lately, the last few years, they've been a um, a dark horse team for the Pac-12. So, again, another a tough matchup. Um, the the other matchups, I think Iowa State can make it definitely very interesting against Iowa. Um, they're a team that I that I expect to kind of make a, a significant jump up this year from instead of you know ninth in the conference, I think they can finish sixth or seventh in in that range. Um, Jacob Park is a is an underrated quarterback. He's returning. Um, they started to figure out Matt Campbell's system towards the end of the year last year. Um, another year in it, it's just going to get better for them. Um, so th there are matchups that are good for the Big Twelve. Uh, Oklahoma State Pitt should Oklahoma State should have no uh, problem with Pitt if we think Oklahoma if, if Oklahoma State is who we think they are, they should they should win that game. Um, but but other than that, the other matchups are, are a little bit concerning. I, as a whole, I don't like it for the Big 12, and it could be a repeat of last year where um, they didn't do well in the non-conference, but I, I do think the conference overall is improving so they could have a very, very good bowl season again. Chris Ross joining us from Land Grant Gauntlet. His uh, podcast is Quick Slant, uh, talking Big 12 football, so please join him there. I eyeballed uh, the 10 games that we're talking about here, Chris. I, I don't see um, 
that the Big 12 is going to uh, turn in a dismal record. Uh, they could easily go 5-5 five and five in these games. I think they're coming off like a 3-7 and seven non-conference before the good postseason against the uh, Power 5. The, the games that really matter here for me, Oklahoma, Ohio State's the obvious choice. But for Oklahoma, maybe they go to Columbus and lose 31-28. And as long as they acquit themselves well and then come back and dominate uh, the Big 12 similar to 2016, then they make a college football playoff appearance. Oklahoma State has to beat Pitt on the road. No questions asked. Pitt's probably a 7-5 and five team. Oklahoma State has to win that game. And then just again for conference pride and respect and the, and the uh, conference narrative, uh, Kansas State can't go to Vanderbilt and lose that game because the, no. the storyline is going to be that an upper echelon Big 12 team lost to a lower tier SEC team. So that can't happen there. The rest of the matchups look like some really good matchups. Texas, if they play well and don't need to win at USC, could uh, really – prove uh well for the big 12's case in my opinion if they play well in that game and, and they do well and we can talk about this because uh texas and usc texas will be the underdog um it will be kind of a repeat of the texas notre dame game where texas was back after that game and then they weren't you know it they, they might play up to and, and get that win in that in that scenario but i don't know if it's a uh a true indication whether or not they're back just yet, because we know the team has weaknesses um, with Oklahoma going to Columbus with Lincoln Riley and the excitement that's there. Um, that is the more likely upset. In my opinion, uh, I wouldn't be super surprised if they won the game They're They are the definite underdog. Uh, but if you look at the way the two teams played at the end of the year last year, I would give the Sooners the edge in that game. They, re, they, they're going to have a very, very solid offensive line. Um, it, it, it's just skill position players, which they have guys in the wings. They, they have the talent on the roster. It's just, who's going to step up and that might actually make it harder for Ohio state to game plan against because they don't know who Oklahoma's weapons are going to be. And, uh, but they do know they're going to have a very solid offensive line. If the defense can improve and get better as they transition back to a four man front, um, that'll be key. Um, they, I think a lot is lost against that Houston and Ohio State game. It was basically the first two games they've played in a three-man front. Uh, that's not really Mike Stoops' defense that he likes to run. He doesn't really um, – he, he'd never done it in his career, so you question how much he fully understood it. Um, so the fact that they're moving back to a four-man front with the excitement, I wouldn't be surprised if OU got the win.